Cells can die when there is some external insult to the cells. For example, there is some injury, then it can cause cell death. So that type of cell death is known as necrosis. On the other hand, there is a programmed machinery within the cell which can cause its uh, death. Suppose uh, when there is some DNA damage in the cell, so that cell will not be able to function properly. So it is useless for the body. So in that case, some internal machinery is activated causing the cell death. And this type of cell death is known as apoptosis. So, when the cells are infected or injured and the cell death which occurs in that case, in that case, cells release toxic substances during the process which can affect the surrounding cells also. So, this leads to inflammation and this affects the surrounding cells. So, this type of cell death, as I said, it is known as necrosis or in layman terms, it is referred to as cell murder. Something external is causing the cell death. However, the other type of cell death, that is the apoptosis, can occur due to the activation of programmed machinery within the cell. And that is why it is also known as programmed cell death or cell suicide. And it is important for removal of unnecessary or damaged cells. Actually, there is a balance between the cell survival and cell death. For the cells to survive, they should actually continuously receive a life-maintaining signal, what is known as growth factors. So the neighboring cells which are in contact with a particular cell, they keep on releasing certain growth factors which maintains the life of the cell. But sometimes this growth factor may not be present then it will cause the death of the cell. Also, the cell may receive a death signal. So in that case also death will occur despite the presence of the growth factor. So both of these cases will cause apoptosis. By the way, this apoptosis term, it literally means falling off. So what happens if uh, this is a cell, some parts of it start falling off as small, small Particle. So, this falling off of particle, that is why it is known as apoptosis. So, what is the significance of this apoptosis? It's a physiological process. So, there are physiological significance. See, during development, what happens? We are basically a mass of cells and from the mass of the cell, a contour has to be developed. For example, if we see our hand, uh, when we are born, it is like this, right? It's all mass of cells and slowly, slowly fingers have to be formed. So the extra cells which are present in between the fingers, they need to be removed, right? So this occurs by apoptosis. Similarly, during the development of the brain, there are a lot of neurons. But uh, with exposure and with the development, what is happening? The connections between the neurons is happening and there are many neurons which actually die in the process. So that is the significance uh, of apoptosis that it is important during development. Then the lymphocytes which uh, develop. Actually, there are many cohorts of lymphocytes uh, which uh, develop which are active against various antigens. Some of these are also active, uh, active against our own antigens. So those lymphocytes should actually die, right? So they are recognized and that uh, lymphocytes actually die by means of apoptosis. And obviously, as I said, that excess cells or unwanted cells are removed by this mechanism. So this is an example of uh, that, uh, that organ size. It is maintained in a constant manner. So excess cells are continuously being Dying. Similarly, in intestinal epithelial cells, you see there is a constant turnover of intestinal epithelial cells. So the cells are dying by apoptosis. So that is the physiological significance of apoptosis. On the other hand, there are some pathological significance as well. Suppose uh, there is a DNA damage within the cell, right? So now the cell may actually become cancerous also. So this kind of cell needs to be identified and removed. So that is uh, occurring by apoptosis. 
then accumulation of misfolded proteins see as the proteins are being uh, formed from mrna they move into the endoplasmic reticulum and from there to the golgi complex in the process the folding of the proteins is occurring suppose if there are proteins which are not being uh, folded uh, properly then those proteins will not be able to perform their function and imagine if lot of these misfolded proteins accumulate again the cell is uh, useless so again these cells need to be identified and removed so there is a mechanism within the cell itself to identify this damage within the cell so dna damage accumulation of misfolded proteins all this leads to apoptosis on the other hand there are viral infections induced apoptosis as well so when a cell becomes virally infected the virus is inside the cell right and virus is using the cell's machinery to replicate so cell tells other cells tells the cells uh, immune cells uh, that uh, okay you can come and kill me now right so that informing of other cells to cause the killing of uh, this infected cell that also occurs by apoptosis so what are the morphological features what are the changes in size shape of the cell which occur in apoptosis what happens the nucleus actually condenses and dna starts breaking within the nucleus the cell becomes smaller cell shrinks actually in necrosis what we were talking the cell becomes large and it ultimately burst but in apoptosis what happens the cells shrink in size the nucleus is also shrinking in size it condenses and inside aspects of the cell start breaking down there is breakdown of the proteins there is breakdown of the dna and after the breakdown there is formation of cytoplasmic blebs and apoptotic bodies okay so the small small aspects of the cell start getting separated from the main cell and these uh, are known as apoptotic bodies they get released they are basically falling off from the main cell they are identified by immune cells that is the macrophages and they are phagocytosed and because of this phagocytosis wherever apoptosis is occurring phagocytosis will occur and because of this there is no inflammation no neutrophils at site of apoptosis so even though apoptosis is a regular process occurring in various tissues throughout the body if we take a sample and look it under microscopy we will not be able to identify apoptosis since there is no neutrophils at site of apoptosis no inflammation is occurring on the other hand what happens in necrosis the cells swell burst release their contents affect the surrounding cells and there is a a uh, neutrophil coming at the site of the apoptosis so that can be easily identified by light microscopy and that we do actually for diagnosis when we take a biopsy we have to look it under the microscope and identify the presence of uh, these uh, neutrophils at the site of necrosis so diagrammatically if we see this is the normal cell and you see here condensation of chromatin is occurring breakdown of a dna particle is occurring and here you see small small cytoplasmic blebs are forming and these contents which are breaking down right they they are entering into these and these are getting separated from the main cell or falling off from the main cell and uh, as they fall off there is a recruitment of the phagocytes at the site of apoptosis they identify them and they ingest them there is no identification of apoptosis at any site and it is not visible under light microscopy fine now what is the mechanism by which this apoptosis is occurring well there are two main pathways by which it occurs one is intrinsic pathway that is the mitochondrial pathway so as the name suggests mitochondria is involved and the other is the extrinsic pathway or what is known as death receptor pathway now this extrinsic pathway will occur in the example which i gave you of virally infected cell because it is telling other cell to come and activate the apoptosis so that is extrinsic pathway some other cell is involved in activating the mechanism of apoptosis intrinsic pathway inherent machinery of the cell will be activated so let us see how these pathways are occurring the intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway 
So here is shown the mitochondrial intrinsic pathway. Before we proceed, let us see some proteins which are present within the cell. There are effectors of apoptosis, okay, and there are regulators of apoptosis. Now, these regulators basically are responsible for keeping the cell alive, okay. So, when the growth factor is present, right, so these regulators that is the BCL2 and BCL XL, you see what they are doing is they are keeping these effectors of apoptosis inhibited. There is inhibition of these effectors and these effectors are which one? BACs and BAC proteins. We can say like BACs and BAC are bad proteins because they are activating apoptosis. Fine. So these regulators, they are keeping the effectors inhibited. Now there is other terms also for these. The regulators are known as anti-apoptotic proteins because they are inhibiting the apoptotic proteins, right? And these effectors are known as pro-apoptotic proteins. So when these proteins will be activated, apoptosis will occur. Now, when there is removal of growth factor, no growth factor. So will these proteins, that is the anti-apoptotic proteins be active? No. Okay. So if the growth factors are removed, or if there is DNA damage or presence of protein misfolding, in the, these last two cases, there is activation of some sensors inside the cell, BH3 sensors. So they can detect that there is some damage occurring inside the cell. So you see what they are doing is they are activating the pro-apoptotic protein. So either removal of inhibition from the pro-apoptotic proteins, that is by this pathway, okay, or Activation of the pro-apoptotic proteins. Removal of inhibition is also activation, right? So, removal of inhibition of pro-apoptotic proteins or activation of the pro-apoptotic proteins, both are involved in intrinsic pathway. Now, these proteins basically are present on the outer membrane of mitochondria, right? Generally, when they are kept inhibited, they are presented as single unit. But, once they activate, they form dimers, right? So they present like this on the cell membrane, outer, uh, sorry, uh, they are present on the outer membrane of the mitochondria and they act as a channel actually. Now, within these two membranes of mitochondria, mitochondria is actually bound by two membranes. There is inner membrane and there is outer membrane. So within these two membranes of mitochondria, there is another protein known as cytochrome C. So when these pro-apoptotic proteins form the channel, the cytochrome C leaks out from this space between the membranes and comes into the cytoplasm. And it is this release of cytochrome C which is critical for beginning of apoptosis. So this cytochrome C actually causes activation of caspases, ultimately leading to activation of endonuclease and causing breakdown of cytoskeleton so because it's a protease so caspases are protease so endonuclease activation what it will do it will cause the breakdown of the nucleus nuclear fragmentation and a protease since caspase is a protease it breaks down the cytoskeletal protein these cytoskeletal proteins are important for maintaining the shape and structure of the cell so if those cytoskeletal proteins break down this blips are going to form and which are going to fall off, right? So in summary, let's just quickly summarize. Mitochondrial intrinsic pathway, it is due to the removal of the growth factor or presence of DNA damage or protein misfolding. DNA damage and protein misfolding, they will directly activate the pro-apoptotic proteins. On the other hand, growth factor withdrawal, it is removing the inhibitory effect of anti-apoptotic proteins from the pro-apoptotic proteins. Once pro-apoptotic proteins are activated, they form a channel, causes the release of cytochrome C from the two membranes of the mitochondria into the cytoplasm. This causes the activation of caspases, which are basically proteases, and this in turn activates endonucleases. So there is breakdown of nucleus, there is breakdown of cytoskeletal proteins, nuclear fragmentation starts. The cell fragmentation starts, there is formation of the cytoplasmic blebs which are then released. So that is intrinsic pathway.
Coming to extrinsic pathway. In extrinsic pathway, there is a death domain which needs to be activated. So, when the cell becomes virus infected, what happens that the cell starts expressing on its surface. So, this is the membrane, right? So, on the membrane, a receptor is start getting expressed known as FAS receptor. Now, our immune cells, they have a ligand for this receptor. So, what will be the name of the ligand? It is FAS ligand. So, when that FAS ligand, which is present on the immune cells, comes and binds to the FAS receptor of the virally infected cell, there is activation of this FAS associated death domain, F-A-D-D. FAS associated death domain. This causes activation of procaspase A. Now, the caspase which we were talking in uh, intrinsic pathway, it is basically caspase 9 which is activated, right? So, it gets converted from procaspase 9 to procaspase, uh, sorry, procaspase 9 to caspase 9. In uh, here, it is procaspase 8 to caspase 8. Now, ultimately in both the pathways, there is activation of caspase 3. So, the intrinsic pathway here, it will cause uh, by a caspase 9. Okay, ultimately it leads to activation of uh, procaspase 3 to caspase 3 and it leads to apoptosis, right? So, here this pathway which is shown, it is the intrinsic pathway. Understood? So, there is intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway of apoptosis. There is a lipid which is normally present on the inner leaflet of the membrane it switches and comes to the outer leaflet of the membrane that is the phosphatidyl serine. So, with the breakdown of the cell, with the formation of the apoptotic bodies, the phagocytes are recruited towards the apoptotic bodies because of some release of some find me signals and because of this switching of the phosphatidyl serine from outside, uh, from inside to the outside of the membrane, the phagocytes can recognize this apoptotic body and there will be phagocytosis. So, these are the eat me signals from the apoptotic bodies which are coming. So, let us just now try to see what are the differences between the necrosis and apoptosis. Necrosis occurs after injury and infection while apoptosis is programmed cell death. Necrosis affects large areas. We said that it will affect the surrounding cells also. Apoptosis, on the other hand, affects scattered cells. Then, in necrosis, there is also DNA fragmentation, but they are irregular in size. However, in apoptosis, the fragments are similar in size. As we said, it is programmed, right? So, the enzymes are acting at particular distances, 200 base pair units. It is breaking down. So, similar in size, DNA fragments. In necrosis, cells swell and burst. In apoptosis, cells and nucleus are shrinking and the apoptotic bodies which are being formed, they are phagocytosed by macrophages. In necrosis, there is inflammatory reaction and in apoptosis, there is no inflammatory reaction. Fine. So, in summary, what we saw is uh, what is apoptosis? What is the importance of apopt apoptosis and when does it occur? What are the morphological changes which occur in apoptosis? Then we saw in detail the mechanisms of apoptosis, the intrinsic pathway, the extrinsic pathway. And then we saw the differences between the necrosis and apoptosis.